Do you have a business of any size? Do you need help with your taxes and accounting? Please call my friends at Peters CPA LLC. You are about to watch Freedom TV with Teresa Lusk. Stay tuned in because we have a powerful show for you. Well, friends, I am so glad you are tuned in to Freedom TV with Teresa Lusk. I am so glad that we have our special guest, Pastor Carmen Lee Lofton. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for having me. I am blessed and humbled to be here. Oh, well, we are so happy that you're here. You know, Pastor Carmen Lee has just a, a huge testimony with so many different areas that could minister to somebody's life. And so I met her a few weeks ago and I said, I need to get her on the program because you could minister to so many different areas in somebody's life, Pastor Carmelie. So begin to tell us a little bit about yourself. Okay, so um, I, of course, went through this whole period where I felt like I was the prodigal daughter mm -hmm. that I had gone through. I was an unwed mother. Um, I had been homeless. I had been abused. I had lost my son, which was a great, great tragedy. And so, um, so in all of that, after realizing who I was and what God was doing, God birthed a ministry out of that. Mm -hmm. He birthed, you know, turning pain into purpose out of that. Mm -hmm. So, um, so just going through this time of feeling unworthy and now knowing that I'm not unworthy, that things right. happen, life happens, you know, just as you said, people die, you know, mm -hmm. and so um, now I feel like out of all that, God has really blessed me to turn turn the pain that was on the inside into a purpose that can mm. bless his people. Mm, that's good. Yeah. When you say you lost your son, you mean he actually passed away? Yes, my son passed away um, when he was 10 years old from a rare blood disease. Mm -hmm. A uh, great, great tragedy. I believed God. I thought that he was going to be healed. Um, and it was a it was like my entire world collapsed mm. that day and um, it was very, very hard it, because when you're not preparing for death, you're believing right. God, you're preparing for life. That's right. And so when he died, I went through all of these emotions. I'm angry with God. I'm mm. blaming God. And finally, you know, years later, after walking around in a fog of grief, mm -hmm. I realized that God had not. Um, taken my son, that mm -hmm. he had not put the disease on my mm -hmm. son, that he was not teaching me a lesson, mm -hmm. but that it was all the enemy and I had charged God foolishly Ooh. and that um, that my son, when he passed away, that God received him, but he did not take him. He didn't need him to be an angel. He didn't that's need right. him to, right. you know, to watch over me. So that's right. why he took him. He, he received him. It was all the enemy's doing mm -hmm. and that then I could look at it a different way and mm -hmm. be okay mm -hmm. with you miss him love him yeah. but not walk around in a fog of grief anymore wow. you know you said that you foolishly charged God yes you know friends let's just be real how many times have we not said God's doing this to me yes to teach me a lesson, number one. Let's let's just talk about that real quick because you know here what what a lot of times we miss, especially for church people, yes. is that what God needs you to learn, He put in His Word. Yes. Amen. Yes. It's mm -hmm. in the Word of yes. God. Yes. You know, so if we're having a hard time learning something, God's not going to deal sickness to you so that you can learn it right. or tragedy, the loss of a child. Can you imagine that kind of pain and saying, well, the Lord did it to teach me a lesson. Right, right. And so many times, Pastor Carmelie, we ascribe evil to God. Yes? yes. Yes. So tell me about that. How did you get past that where you could recognize and go, this isn't from God. Yes. God's wanting to, he wants me to know his heart. He sent his son, Jesus, to pay for the price for my sins so that I can be healthy, then, then how can I say that sickness is from God? How did you work that out? 
because I, I stopped listening to the people around me, mm, the people who work. were saying, you know, um, God, you know, you he did this and, you know, um, almost almost making it seem like because you had done so many things, mm -hmm. this was your payback mm -hmm. for the bad things. Ooh. And so. It came with that intimacy, with mm -hmm. me getting before God, with no one else around, getting before him and really just pouring out my heart before mm -hmm. him, mm -hmm. getting transparent, apologizing to God, mm -hmm. you know, repenting that I, I had charged him foolishly, mm -hmm. that I had um blamed you God you're a good God and there's no evil in that's you that's right no darkness in none mm -hmm. and so no you're not responsible for this no you're not punishing me because I mean who would want to serve a God that mm -hmm. punished you by taking your mm -hmm. child mm -hmm. and so I realized that a lot of things that have happened to me not my son's death but a lot of things being homeless and getting pregnant when I was 16 years old right. that was my choice right you know that was things yes. that that I chose to do That's right. and so be, so when you make choices there's consequences right. for those choices absolutely so that's good that's yes. good you know I know that it's hard sometimes because we hear in the church so for I mean it, it's a theology yes. really it's what it is and yes. you know when we come with this kind of, of of bringing forth truth there's resistance yes but this this isn't about resisting you and saying look how you're wrong this is just saying can we look at the word? Yes. Can we look at the word? Now, I realize that God dealt with people differently in the old covenant. Yes. But once you enter a new covenant, once we enter into the covenant of grace, yes. that's where things are different. Yes. And we can't look at it the same way anymore. Right. Because God's not looking to punish. If he was trying to do that, then then the, the, the crucifixion and the resurrection were all in vain. Yeah, of course. It's all in vain. And so we need to look at the word. And why is it so important that we're talking about this? Because the truth will set you free. It will, yes. It will empower you to see that God is good. Yes, he You is. know, he, we can't mm -hmm. be double-minded. We've got to decide, yes. is God good? Yes. Or is he not? Yes. Yes. Amen. Amen. And Amen. so you went in and you went into a time of intimacy. What would you say is a, is just being intimate? Because a lot of people hear the word intimacy and they mm -hmm. think sex, but it's not sex. Intimacy is a, a very personal, vulnerable, transparent, yes. putting down all your guard yes. with the Lord. Yes. How can somebody who's never done that before, Pastor Carmelie, Let's say they're watching and they say, that's me. I've been believing for all this time that God is punishing me, that he's making all these things happen to me. How can I enter into this intimacy that Pastor Carmelite's talking about and put my guard down and say, God, speak to me because I believe these things about you. Yes. Well, I think first of all, you have to turn off every other voice. Mm every other voice, the voice Amen. of the pastors and the bishops Ooh. and all of those people who, who are speaking and not that their voices are impo aren't important, Absolutely. but they're, they don't trump God's voice. That's right. And so when you turn off that and you surrender your heart to God and you say, God, I need this moment with you because if you think that God puts things on you for every mistake you make, then mm. you expect nothing from him. And that's, that's right. the way I walked around, mm -hmm. not expect praying, but never expecting Oof, anything. That's good. And so I got into that place where in the morning, before I looked at Facebook, before mm -hmm. I turned the phone on, before I looked at the TV, just lying there. Some days I cried and cried and cried. Some days I talked and talked and talked. <laughs> and some days I just That's listened. And good. one day mm -hmm. I just felt God show up and the walls of my heart begin mm. to break down because my there was a wall up. I didn't believe anything. So nothing was going in and nothing mm. was coming out. Mm, that's good. Yes, that's so good. You know, I have I wrote a book recently and I'm talking in there about having faith for good or faith for evil, wow. because people do not understand that faith is just what you're believing is going to come to pass. Yes. And so many times, my friends, we line up our faith with the plan of the enemy. Yes. Yes. When we're thinking, God, you know, this, I'm going to be punished. Yes. 
And so who shows up? The enemy to make sure you do feel that punishment. Why? Because that's your faith. You're believing for that. Instead of believing God, you've got to turn off all the voices. Now, I know that that's kind of a challenging thing to hear because we're in church and sometimes within the church, we hear certain things that are not necessarily correct, but that is why we need to be in the word. Yes. And just because the multitude of voices are saying it doesn't mean it's true. That's right. Let's go That's back right. to the word. What, yes. you know, if Jesus died to pay for our sickness, yes. Yes. then, then how can we say that he's putting sickness? Yes. If Jesus went out to minister healing yes. and casting out devils, yes. why would God be the one putting that on you? Yes. Now, yes. we may open the door to that. We may yes. say, you know what? I want to play with darkness. Yes. I, hey, <laughs> you're responsible for that. Yes. But that's yes. not God's doing. It's not. It's not. It's- Go. You know, we have to trust that God is good. Yes. And I know I've seen the battles, uh, uh, Pastor Carmelita, I'm sure you've seen them with people who, who, um, you know, you pray for them because something's happening mm-hmm. and then you just see the accumulation of the next thing, the next yes. thing, the next thing, yes. the next thing. Yes. I mean, you're battling against what they're believing for, yes. but God is greater. Yes, he is. And yes. so, you know, what would you say to somebody who's watching right now and they say, you know what? I've been through so many things thing after thing, things have fallen apart. Maybe my husband left me. Maybe I've been a single mom. Maybe I was sexually abused. Maybe my child has sickness. Maybe, maybe, maybe. And it's God doing it. What would you say to them? Look at the camera and tell them, what would you say to them, Pastor Carmelie? I would say that you have to trust God. Even on, I I know people say this all the time, trust God when you can't trace him. Mm -hmm. I really had to Mm -hmm. do that. I had to find a scripture that Mm -hmm. spoke to my life. That scripture was Romans 8 and 28. And we know that all things work together for the good of them that love God and who are called according to his purpose. When God says all things in his word, he means all things, the good things, the bad things, Mm -hmm. the suffering, the pain, the anguish, the what if the why Mm -hmm. did this have to happen and in that when I decided that that would be my life verse I had to trust God like you say you cannot be double minded you can't trust him today and not tomorrow (laughs) amen yeah yes yes amen that's a good word she quoted Romans 8 28 look it up if you're not familiar with it make it your own write it down yes quote it you know and just because you know suffering came doesn't mean that he he did it. So no. what we're saying is here the word says that he's going to make all things work for the good of those who yes. love him and are called according to his purposes. So that suffering that you went through, yes. uh, something good has to come out of it yes. because God cannot lie. He can't. So while you're going in through a hard time, God cannot lie. Yes. And he is a good God. And I yes. challenge you, my friends, we challenge you. Yes to begin to challenge those beliefs that you have, that you've been taught because you hear them over and over again, that doesn't make it true. What is true is that God is good, that Jesus paid the price for our sin, and that he paid the price for sickness. He rose again, he seated at the right hand of the Father, and he's praying for you. So friends, we hope that this time has blessed you. Don't forget to visit our website, TeresaLusk.com. Go to our Facebook page, Freedom TV with Teresa Lusk. And friends, I just pray that you'll be blessed and set free today and may you prosper in Jesus name. Do you desire to deepen your walk with the Lord and change your prayer life? Well, prayers that change us can help you do just that. Get your copy at CreateSpace or Amazon.com. Well, friends, I am so glad you're watching Freedom TV with Teresa Lusk today. I have a powerful message for you, so hang in there. But before we get started, I want to invite you to visit our website, TeresaLusk.com. Our Facebook page is Freedom TV with Teresa Lusk, or you could email Teresa at Teresa Lusk. Today's message is out of the book of First Samuel chapter 17, and we are going to talk about testing your armor. You know, as I was studying this this book and definitely this chapter, the Lord began to show me so many things in here that um, that were just so powerful and so moving, and I knew that I had to share this message with you. So get your phone ready 
<clears throat> pull out a tablet with a pen and paper, uh, pull out your phones, take mess, uh, notes because you don't want to miss some amazing revelation that I know God is going to give you individually and then throughout the message. So again, we're reading out of 1 Samuel 17. Grab your Bibles. I'm reading out of the New American Standard Bible version. And so I'm going to read. It's quite, I'm going to read quite a bit of the chapter. And so just hang in there for some powerful revelations that are going to come forth. So I start with verse 20, verse 17, Samuel, verse 20 says, So David arose early in the morning and left the flock with a keeper and took the supplies and went as Jesse had commanded him. And he came to the circle of the camp while the army was going out in battle array, shouting the war cry. Israel and the Philistines drew up in battle array army against army. So here he goes, you know, David's brothers are already getting ready to fight against the Philistines. His father, Jesse is concerned and he says, go check in, make sure your brothers are okay. And so David's getting ready to go check in on his brothers as his father commanded him to. Then verse 22, then David left his baggage in the care of the baggage keeper and ran to the battle line and entered in order to greet his brothers. So David had a warrior in him already. I know you've heard this, but hang in there because I've got a lot to share with you today that, that maybe you have not heard. And so David, with his warrior spirit, he runs to the battle line. He runs to see what's going on here because that warrior spirit in him just drew him naturally to that environment. And he was talking with them, meaning with the men. Behold, the champion, the Philistine from Gath named Goliath, was coming up from the army of the Philistines. And he spoke these same words, and David heard them. In other words, this Philistine had already been taunting them, had been mocking them, had been making them feel like nothing. And, and David heard the words. When all the men of Israel saw the man, they fled from him and were greatly afraid. I don't know how many men were out there, but I know this. It was several men. These men of Israel said, have you seen this man who is coming up? Surely he's coming up to defy Israel. And it will be that the king will enrich the man who kills him with great riches and will give him his daughter and make his house free in Israel. Watch this. Then David spoke to the men who were standing by him saying, what will be done for the man who kills this Philistine and takes away the reproach from Israel? For who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should taunt the armies of the living God? The people answered him in accord with his word saying, thus it will be done for the man who kills him. So watch this. Before I go on to the next section, I really want to give you some strong points that we have here just from this section alone. Remember, we're talking about testing your armor out of 1 Samuel 17. And there's three things to know when wrestling a spiritual issue. See, the Philistine, he's just a, an example of the bullies that come into our life to try to invoke fear into us, to try to provoke it out of us. See, he had a big mouth and he was taunting them, defying them, mocking them. But these are the armies of the God of Israel and they're feeling afraid, but they have this giant that's that's kind of overwhelming them and, and, and making them feel fear by the words that are being spoken. But David didn't feel fear. On the other hand, it stirred something on the inside of him. And so he wants to know, you know, what, what's in it for me? What's this battle about? And so whenever we wrestle against certain things, we need to first identify, is this something that you are supposed to be wrestling through? You know, David wasn't one who was already sent into the battle, but he went, he observed everything and he thought, you know what, this might be something I need to enter into. There are some spiritual wrestlings that might need to take place on your behalf for the sake of others. Maybe it's your marriage. Maybe it's your family, your kids, your, your work, your city. I don't know, but you know, what are those things that you might enter into a war for? And so David wanted to know that first he determined that this might be for me. Number two, he wanted to know what will be the payoff because I'm about to enter into a, a, a wrestling match here. 
I know I come from a place of victory, but I, I'm about to enter into it, into it. It's going to take some effort and it may not take a whole lot of effort, but he was going to, he was going into something and he needed to know what was the payoff. So friends, you might have to ask yourself, what's the payoff? Is the payoff something worth you entering into? Most of you can tell me probably yes because it involves family, it involves your job, it involves your ministry, your business, it involves your health, it involves something that you care about. So ask yourself as you face each a new situation that you feel like there may be a spiritual aspect to this. You may need to ask yourself, what is the payoff? And for me, the payoff is peace. The payoff is to have what God told me I'm supposed to have. Those are my payoffs. The payoff is I will watch my children serve the Lord. That's my payoff. And so the, you've got to ask yourself, what's the payoff? And then you've got to give out the war cry in your heart. That's when you decide I'm entering into this. I am going to walk into it. I am going to enter into this wrestling Thing, but only because I come from a place of victory. And so give the war cry in your heart. And let me tell you, God, his angels and the enemy will all know that you are standing because you gave out the war cry. And number four, assert your position. David said, who is this uncircumcised Philistine that should taunt the armies of the living God? In other words, who is this enemy who should be talking to these men who belong to the Lord? They're representatives of the Lord. Why is, he, why is this one man talking to these other men like this? And so he came from a place of knowing who he was, but mostly who God was. He knew who God was. And so that is what he asked himself. You know, that's a stirring of the spirit. That's a stirring of your faith. And it's really important that we go into it in that manner. We are so glad you're watching Freedom TV with Teresa Lusk. As a matter of fact, we want to connect with you. We want to hear your testimonies. We want to receive your prayer requests. So connect with us. Go to TeresaLusk.com or you can find us on Facebook under Freedom TV with Teresa Lusk or Teresa Lusk Ministries. We look forward to staying in touch. God bless. Well, friends, you are now tuned in to the Keeping It Real portion of Freedom TV with Teresa Lusk. I have a couple of very good questions that I am going to enjoy answering for you. The first one is my child and I both feel a presence when we're going to sleep. What can I do about that? You know, a lot of people complain about feeling something or someone in their room uh, when they are trying to go to sleep. Um, you know, the Bible is very clear that, that we live in a spiritual world. I realize that we're in the natural, but there are spiritual things that are happening. When you look in the Bible, there is, um, there are demons, there are, uh, demonic presences. Basically it's the same thing that can appear unto a person and cause disruption. Um, I know for a fact that the enemy likes to mess with people at times. And that is why we need to know what we can do to resist that from happening. And I actually grew in, in my understanding and faith of that as the years have gone by. Um, there were times when I have gotten uh, awoke, awakened by something and I could feel presence and a fear. And, uh, you know, I think some of you have even described these stories as being paralyzed, not being able to move. And so what I want to encourage you to do is number one, to understand that you have authority in Jesus Christ. If you're a child of God and you say, Jesus is my savior, you have authority in Jesus Christ to tell that presence to leave. And so what you have to do is open up your mouth, even in the midst of the fear and say, in the name of Jesus, I command you to leave. And the presence will eventually leave as you practice strengthening your spiritual authority and really living it out and living in it, you will begin to see these things happen less and less. And so be encouraged by that. My friends, don't get afraid. Know that Jesus already defeated the enemy and no matter how strong their presence is or how scary it is at times, you still have the authority in Jesus Christ to tell them to leave. So be encouraged by that word. Remember, it's real simple. Open up your mouth. I command you to leave in the name of Jesus and it will leave. 
and uh, eventually you may just get to the point where you recognize that something is there and I just got to the point where I just said Lord just thank you I'm too tired to deal with this please send your angels to deal with it I'm tired and I just went back to sleep you know I've just gotten to the point where I recognize what it is I'm too tired to deal with it I'm not gonna lose sleep over it but uh, as you begin to practice living and understanding who you are in Christ that will become less and less uh, the same thing uh, you can always invite the presence of God before you go to bed and say Lord I thank you I, I ask you to be in my home Holy Spirit I give you my home uh, a lot of times when I go into people's homes I can usually tell if they have dedicated their home to the Lord because you can feel the Spirit of God ruling and reigning over it and sometimes you can tell that it's not or you can tell that something else is and so I encourage you to give your home over to the Lord and just say it belongs to you God the second question is I'm thinking about returning to school how do I know if it's God's will well my friends sometimes it requires a step of faith simply saying God I ask you to stir my faith for what you've called me to do I ask you to stir my faith and excitement about what you want me to do if this schooling is for for me and you want me to do this then encourage me God to do it strengthen me to take the steps put everything into place and help me to move forward you know a lot of times we just do things by faith I definitely would encourage that you pray about it and just say Lord I thank you that you're going to ensure me that this is what I'm supposed to be doing education is a good thing it's also an expensive thing and so I would definitely encourage you to say Lord I need you to to just confirm in my spirit and uh, and just make a way for everything to fall into place well friend I hope these questions have helped you and I encourage you to visit our website TeresaLusk.com our Facebook page Freedom TV with Teresa Lusk or email us Teresa at TeresaLusk.com may God richly bless you and I pray that Freedom TV with Teresa Lusk is changing your life have you been blessed by watching Freedom TV with Teresa Lusk would you like to be a blessing to others then go to our website TeresaLusk.com click on the donate here button where you can give your tax-deductible donation of any amount. We thank you in advance for making it possible for us to spread a life-giving, long-lasting, life-changing message. Are you an organization or business of any size? Do you believe in integrity, loyalty, and professionalism? Then we are looking for you. Freedom TV with Teresa Lusk is looking to partner with organizations that would like to have their business mentioned on our program. Contact us, TeresaLusk.com or email Teresa at TeresaLusk.com. Thank you so much and we look forward to connecting.